Uh, talking of TV, Dad's Army, Doctor Who, Top of the Pops, these are among the crown jewels of British television. So it's pretty hard to fathom how some of the earlier episodes were allowed to disappear. This is because they were never recorded in the first place or they, the tapes were simply lost. They thought they were lost, not necessarily, because some things crop up, don't they, years later, and a group of TV historians are appealing for all of us to go up in the loft, to check our cupboards, our sheds, look anywhere for an old reel, an old tape of a recording, which might be able to show us what telly used to be like. There's lots of telly treasure that's already been discovered. Hello, citizens. I'm taking a holiday from crime fighting in Gotham City. No rest from danger, though, because all around us is that deadly, daily danger, traffic. At the curb, stop. Look right, look left, look right again. If all's clear, walk quickly across. One of these celebrities is sitting in the secret square, and the contestant who picks it first could get to see the Little Mermaid. Which celebrity is it? Is it Lionel Blair? I want you to take him to the Oxbridge Hospital, to the casualty department. I don't know, but I think it's very likely they'll want to admit him, so that the eye surgeon can have a look at it. Thanks very much, leading cook. There we are. Lovely crest from HMS5. And I hope uh, to all of you watching this evening, thanks very much on their behalf too. All the Navy. Thanks very much. OK, Matt and Katie could soon, and here's their latest one. It's called Don't Do It, Baby. <laughs> Should we dance along to that? No. No, I think you're right. Uh, Chris Perry is one of the TV historians behind this campaign to try Morning. to track down uh, missing reels. Morning. Hi, Chris. Morning. Uh, can we start talking about that, that Batman, Adam West video, sort of road safety video? Because you, you found that one, didn't you? Tell us how. Yes, yeah, so I bought that on eBay on Christmas Day when most people are doing more normal things like, you know, cooking the turkey or doing other things. I was just kind of browsing through, saw a reel of 35 millimetre adverts for sale and thought, oh, I'll have a look at those. And then when we started actually going through the reel afterwards, suddenly realised there it was, Adam West as Batman. We can see it again. It's just brilliant. I admire the way all you British children triumph over this danger by learning and using the road safety code, like curb drill. Before crossing the road, you stop at the curb, look right, look left, look right again, and then only if the road is clear, walk quickly across. Now, children, how does it go? At the curb, stop. Look right, look left, look right again. If all's clear, walk quickly across. If you're walking to school this morning, just remember that's how you do it. You hold Batman's hand. <laughs> All mum and dad. Yeah. I mean, that, that was, um, that was the sort of precursor of the Green Cross Code Man, I guess, but back then they used Batman. Yes, when I first saw it, I actually thought it might be American because using the term curb jewel, you kind of think to yourself, yeah. I've never heard of that before. And I had to go online and do a bit of research. And I eventually found May 1967, Adam West came over here and made that film for the Central Office of Information, which is the government, basically. Yeah. And obviously, that, that was in the days before you kind of had the Green Cross Code man, you know, Dave Brown. Uh, it's some interesting places that stuff's been discovered. Bob Monkhouse's attic. Yeah, we, we were extremely lucky. Kaleidoscope uh, stored the Bob Monkhouse collection. Uh, his daughter, Abigail, asked us to look after it when he died. And um, most of his film used to be stored up in the attic. So uh, I kind of went up there to get the film. And I just noticed there was a plastic bag a kind of, almost like a Sainsbury's plastic bag, I think it was, out on the rafters of the actual house. So I crawled along the rafter to get it, thinking, well, who knows what it is. And there were some old Phillips 1500 tapes inside it, one of which was Lenny Henry's first ever appearance on New Faces. So it was well worth going to get those Have tapes. Have you been in touch with Lenny Henry to show him? Oh, yes. yes oh, how did he react to that? He loved it. Yeah. He came to an event at BAFTA about, about five years ago now where we showed it to him. And he was absolutely bowled over. He just kind of... The, the saddest part was he said his mum always wanted to see it again. And that's the, the beauty, really, of finding lost footage. When you can reunite it with people who really appreciate it or remember it, it brings back those memories and it makes people really happy. I think a lot of people watch you say, of course, somebody like Bob Monkhouse will have tapes and reels in his attic, but I'm not going to have stuff like that in my attic or my shed, am I? I mean, what, are, are most of us really going to have material that you'd be interested in? I think it's incredible where some of it turns up. I mean, you know, film prints of Doctor Who have turned up in the basement of a Mormon church 25 years ago. Now, why or how would you have film prints of Doctor Who in the basement of a Mormon church? But we'll probably never know. But the one thing I've realised over the years is that every time someone kind of says, oh, you're never going to find that, that will just never turn up. 
probably six months later, somebody rings you up or emails you and says, I've just come across such and such a car boot sale or, you know, and my mum has died and she used to work for the BBC and I've gone into her attic and she's got these old photographs and scripts. If you work out the fact that probably, you know, that the, well, there's probably 100,000 people have worked in the media over the years who've now retired and mm. left. If, ever, if just one thing was kept by each of them, very, there very could be 100,000. Oh. Very quickly, what's the one thing you'd love to find? Oh, gosh, that's a hard one. Real hard one for me. I love Public Eye. The TV series Public Eye with Alfie Burke. There you go. Well, everyone should take a look in their attics, perhaps, and, and see. Chris, thanks very much. Um, yeah, check out the old attics, basements, our garages, see what's tucked away. You may have something rather remarkable. A classic edition of Breakfast from years gone by. Who knows? 27 minutes past seven. Uh, let's get the news, the travel and weather from breakfast teams around the UK. We'll see you in a minute.